Hi everyone, this video is all about butterfly photography. I'm gonna be talking about how you can shoot in specific weather conditions that might make things a little bit easier. If you're keen on butterfly photography, then you've probably been told to look for butterflies early in the morning while they're still roosting. And there's a number of advantages to this. Firstly, they're just simply gonna be much more still. If you can find them still roosting, then they're gonna be completely still or just waking up. Uh, you can get some water droplets if you've got the right conditions and get the water on the butterfly. And also the light is gonna be very low, so that can be a benefit as well. One of the difficulties with this technique is finding the butterflies in the first place. It's really not as easy as as you might think it is and also it just means you have to get up sometimes just ridiculously early uh, to get where you want to be early enough uh, not everybody wants to be doing that sometimes you might need to get up at half past three in the morning just to give yourself those opportunities I have a theory and this is that it can work really really well to photograph butterflies on cloudy days uh, now this is something I've just seen from personal experience and I'm trying to work on it and look at it a lot more now I'm not backing it up by science or anything uh, but in the right conditions under cloudy skies I think it can work well because the butterflies still seem to be active you can find them you can see them easily uh, they can still be on the wing but I just think they seem to slow down a little bit more which makes it easier for you um, so a day like today it's just almost clear blue sky there's lots of butterflies flitting around it's quite warm as well these kind of conditions are just really really difficult to photograph butterflies uh, they barely stop moving sometimes they, they don't stay still for long and it can be almost impossible to get pictures I think it seems a little bit easier to follow the butterfly if it's moving, feeding from flower to flower. Again, because it's slower, I think it's a little bit easier and you can follow it hand holding the camera. So this technique, uh, under a cloudy sky, it might actually mean shooting in the middle of the day. So I'm going completely against what most of the rule books will tell you. So if you want to try this, then look for those days where it's still relatively warm, uh, maybe about 20 degrees, something like that. Uh, but what you wanna have is lots of cloud in the sky, ideally a pretty even layer of cloud cover. And I think some of those days, kind of like those muggy days, it's cloudy, but it's still quite warm. Uh, in the UK, we probably get a lot of those days more in July and August. Another benefit of shooting under these conditions is the lighting. So you can get a, a lovely quality of lighting, nice evenly lit across the subject. Uh, you don't have to worry about the shadows as much. So if you're shooting in the sun, at some point you might have to worry about the shadows depending on the angle. If you're shooting under cloud, then you don't have that problem really. Yeah, you should be able to approach pretty much from any angle you want. Uh, just the quality of light itself, like a, like a giant softbox, it can be really nice and even, soft lighting, but it can have a little bit of a sparkle as well. If you're shooting in these conditions, then you'll need to do a bit more work with your exposure. So you probably need to reduce your shutter speed a bit or to increase the ISO because the light levels are gonna be a little bit lower. Um, another thing as well, if you're shooting under the cloud, it's easier to control the whites. If you imagine under these conditions, controlling the whites on a butterfly, like a, a marble white, for example, very, very difficult, very reflective. Under the overcast conditions, then it's much easier to control and get an even exposure. Bear in mind, you'll still need to use the same techniques uh, in terms of your exposure, choosing the correct shutter speed, uh, your aperture for your depth of field, and also how you position yourself, how you get close to the butterfly in order to photograph it. If you wanna see specific tips and techniques on butterfly photography, then do click the link up here. I think this kind of technique would work for other insects as well, although I probably haven't experienced that or tested it so much as I have with butterflies. But if you do get those days in the summer where it's, it's kind of muggy, it's still pretty warm, but you've got some decent amount of cloud cover, then give this a go. Particularly good for those of you who don't want to get up early in the morning and drag yourself out of bed. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.